Hey folks, welcome to Rising Nomad. In this video, we're gonna talk about the gringo bubble of Copangan, the foreign community which makes me wanna live here on this island in Thailand. It's something that is very unique, I think, and is also not really much to do with Thai culture in general. It's a bunch of foreigners around the world coming here to explore new possibilities, and that's what I love about this place. I've got Sean here from the University of Melbourne. He's doing a PhD on digital nomadism and all this sort of stuff. And you've been here for a while looking at what's going on here. And this is one of the most fascinating places to see um, how the culture of digital nomads and expats and all that sort of stuff comes together to make something new, interesting and unique. How does it look as an anthropologist? Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting because you think about um, a lot of travelers, a lot of digital nomads, the reason why they leave their countries of origins yeah. is to find, to go somewhere new, to experience otherness, to experience difference, to experience different cultures. And yet um, what tends to happen is that they tend to congregate uh, amongst themselves and form collectives and groups amongst people just like themselves. But they're in now, instead of being you know, in, in Australia or in Canada or Europe, they're, you know, they're, they're living together in Thailand. So you have this paradox where people leave their home in pursuit of difference, but yet they come together with like-minded people in the same space. And I think that's actually what makes Kopangan a really amazing place for people. And it feels like home for people because they're able to kind of, first of all, they have the difference. You're in you know, a tropical island in Thailand and there's, you know, there's Thai people here, obviously there's Thai culture, Thai cost, customs. But then you have the fam familiarity of home with the services here, with the cafes, the restaurants, and people that are just like yourself. Yep. So it's, it's actually, I think, it's an interesting um, paradox where difference and similarity are both playing out in the same space. Yeah, and also what I find super interesting is uh, the multiculturalism among tourists and stuff like that. Basically how you have different types of Europeans, North Americans, Australians, everybody from the world um, coming, Latin Americans and stuff like that, mm. coming to sort of like, uh, just experience that and make a community together. So there's a diversity of that that you wouldn't get if this was in a certain Western country, this sort of place. You know, if you go to these um, alternative sort of uh, hotspots in, for example, Canada, you don't have, uh, you know, it's, it's dominated by Canadian people in BC and stuff like that. If you go, you know, in Australia, I'm sure it's dominated by that culture. But here, like, I, I can't really say that any one culture really has a wow. foothold on the, uh, dominates the expat scene. Yeah. Um, the biggest one is Russians, of course, but they, they are largely um, an aside to the expat scene where, yeah. where English is the main language. Yeah. They have their own groups. They have their own groups. Yeah, and communities as well. So, yeah. Um, and, but there's yeah. lots of German people, lots of French people, lots of everybody. Mm. But, I mean, that's what we love about the whole nomad community is that yeah. it's so multicultural and cosmopolitan. Um, people from all different walks of life and all different nationalities and, and all kind of it all kind of works as well. This is the thing with Copenhagen, it kind of all works. Like there is people such are a, kind to each yeah, other. People are nice, people smile to you while you're driving your scooter on the other side of the road. It, it kind of works, it's, it's an amazing kind of thing. But yeah, it's, but then, um, you know, there's not much interaction, at least for me and my, my friends, a lot of interaction with ties. Like even yeah. the interaction that I have with ties are usually but from Burma, working at the cafes and the Those restaurants, aren't ties. and they're not even ties. Yeah. yeah. So it's like you uh, think you, like it's hard for us as Westerners to yeah. tell the difference if we're speaking to them yeah. in English, whether yeah. they're from Burma or yeah. Thailand, and, yeah. and yeah. you know if we hear them speak yeah. their own language, yeah. perhaps yeah. yes. Yeah. But but maybe yeah. Not. But I mean, that's what makes Copenhagen such a unique kind yeah. of place. And we come here to do something different with our lives. This is a place where people are trying to leave behind something that they didn't like in a lot of cases in their home country and embrace a more down-to-earth, um, natural lifestyle uh, where they can explore um, things like yoga, where they can explore um, different um, sort of like uh, health and wellness pursuits. Mm. Uh, mm. And then the, the um, much uh, discussed uh, spirituality <laughs> um, where they can become digital nomads. And yeah, there's different types of characters that you sort of see popping up here. Yeah. But what unites us is we're all looking for some sort of community. Yeah. Whereas it's, it's different in a place where, I, I mean, I feel like um, 
if you end up moving to a place like Bangkok, you're going to be overwhelmed by this um, hustle and bustle and the different types of Thai culture that you see expressed, uh, the more affluent sort of high society type versus mm -hmm. the more like uh, working class. It's all in your face all the time, whereas what's in your face here is just that there's a lot of people who end up in this place because they weren't happy elsewhere. And that brings a certain level of problems as well, a certain level of confusion. But it's special and there's potential. There's lots of room for discussion. And I think that the people who end up here, we all have a lot more in common with each other than we would have had in common with uh, the countries that we came from. Totally. You know, like... Totally. In just, we're looking for an alternative to that. But I, I guess we could say that about nomads as well. Like, the nomads have quite a lot in common. Like, they, they were both curious about the outside world. They were both looking for something else. They didn't want to follow the, the stock standard um, societal, the social script that we have, you know, yeah. like get, you know, go to university, get a job, get married, build a house. No, we didn't want that. So we're looking for something more. And Kopangan, yeah, probably attracts it maybe a bit more than other places in the sense that there's that whole spiritual component. So the spiritual development, trying to kind of um, investigate, you know, the yeah. transcendental parts of life. But before we jump into that sort of thing, I, I want to just comment that uh, this sort of thing, like if, if you're from a country and you immigrate to another country, there's a certain impetus to fit into that um, country destination, mm. get a job, join the social mm -hmm. hierarchy and stuff like that. What we're encountering here is, is much different. It's essentially a blank slate. Mm -hmm. And that's why how we can focus on, you know, not fitting in, but uh, fit, like experimenting with spiritual ideas, experimenting yeah. with online businesses and stuff like that. It's a really different sort of paradigm than the usual migrant or immigrant thing where you had to fit mm. in and be dependent on the local economy mm. and uh, learn the local language and stuff like that. You but, can get by fine yeah. without learning the local language and you can basically just socialize with foreigners and everybody's as spaced out and has as much as a blank slate as mm. you to become whatever character they yeah. want. So it gets a little outrageous a lot of the time. Yeah. These spiritual people, these life coaches, yeah. uh, these people who hold these workshops who have no formal training in psychology or trauma or stuff like that who are suddenly um, going into these really deep, dark places with other people. And there's lots of talk about how... Um, how much damage can be done um, in these workshops. And I, I hear stories like a lot about people who are just uh, just going into places that in, in normal society, in normal um, places that they're likely from, would be completely taboo and uh, completely um, outrageous and, and kind of just like, here you can do that. And, yeah. and yeah. everyone, yeah, it's, 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 it's controversial to say the least. Like yeah. what can be done? Because like at the end, end of the day, people still have their desires to make money, have sex, uh, have power over other people and all that sort of stuff. But it's then brought into this uh, sort of spiritual, uh, mm. n n nicely wrapped sort of thing where you're exploring yourself. Mm. And, and it's, it's like, it's, it can be very transformative and it can also be very tra traumatizing and, and sort of thing. So it's just like a blank slate. What yeah. do you think about that blank slate? Yeah, like I was just going to say, like, do you think that maybe like the, the whole conscious community here in Copenhagen is the culture that maybe some people feel like they need to conform to? So yes, it's a kind also, of aesthetic, yes. You know, for some, for some people that come here for that. There's always that, yeah. Yeah, they come into that. Um, but yeah, like the whole... Um, but there's more discussion in that culture yeah. um, about what, what the conformity is and what you're actually signing up for. There's a lot of discussion. There's a... Um, I view it as like what I sort of call post-scarcity, whereas people feel that they, like largely um, Western people here, have their material needs met, and so they have time to discuss the nuances of the cultural paradigms that they yeah. find themselves in. And there's yeah. lots, it's super interesting it's from interesting. a psychological, and it allows you a lot of opportunity yeah. to explore yourself and your relationship vis-a-vis -vis society. But at the same time, there is this sort of like... Uh, yeah, fit into this uh, sort of thing and different people. Like, I, I kind of feel like uh, I've only, when I'm going to those events and workshops, I've only got one foot in that. And I think a lot of people feel like that because I still feel like an outsider no matter where I am. And a mm. lot of people probably feel mm. the same. Mm. But yeah, then there are probably um, groups that are more dogmatic um, and more um, sort of like conformist in the way it is. But overall, I'd say that in that, that group of conscious community people and I, I even have a 
trouble with the term conscious community. I find it kind of like, what, everyone else is unconscious? No. Um, <laughs> but there's, there's a lot more discussion. There's a lot more, yeah, consciousness in there about um, the paradigms <laughs> that we're holding ourselves yeah, yeah, I think, too. you know, yeah, like I, I, li I like that point about feeling like an outsider. I think m most nomads felt like outsiders. That's why they kind of, they kind of left to try to find their insiders. And then they find it here in Copangan. Yeah. They find a group of people that they feel, oh, shit, we're all outsiders and, and together we can be outsiders. And then all of a sudden now we're kind of insiders in an outsider kind of paradigm. Yeah. And that's, that's the beauty, I think, of, of, of this place is that it kind of, it could, could be a container for lots of different kinds of people. But yeah, just about the whole, like, um, you know, the traumatic kind of uh, shady kind of counsel as a therapist. The thing is, because Copenhagen has, has made a name for itself as a place of healing, you're going to attract people that are unwell. And then you have this <laughs> dynamic where someone says, hey, I can fix you, I can heal your, your issues and people that are willing to kind of have their issues healed. And then you have this opportunity for exploitation and for people to take advantage of each other. And yeah, which is, is yeah, it's, it's a particularly um, interesting example yeah. when that sort of stuff happens. Um, and there's a sense of betrayal um, that tends to happen as well. Totally. And, but you have to, yeah, everybody kind of means well, but at the same time is out for themselves as well. Mm. And it's like, yeah, it's just a new version of, of like the sort of way that people exploit each other in capitalism. And, and yeah, but, you know, people here use a language that, you know, they use <laughs> almost this sort of neo-religious language to sort yeah. of wrap up the stuff that they're yeah. doing. like Energy uh, exchange. Energy exchange, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what's the, what's the exchange? It's like, well, um, I want you to pay me um, $200 for my yeah. four hours yeah. of, you yeah. know, yeah, like it's workshop not, or whatever. It's, no, not any, yeah. it's not any energy. It's energy in a specific form, which is cold, hard currency, preferably... I mean, yeah, okay, they can take Thai part, but preferably, you know, maybe like US dollars or whatever. But yeah, even like the, the donations, and they have suggested donation. Yeah. And sometimes you even see like a minimum donation. It's yeah. like, isn't that like an, ox isn't that an oxymoron? Which like, it's a contradiction. Sounds ridiculous. <laughs> like, it's, it, it's, I, I guess it's just to make the whole thing more palatable. Yeah, I know. You know, the, the yeah. whole thing is supposed to be like a more gentle version of, of the civilizations that we left that still caters to our needs, um, demands, and desires. Um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah. it's quite funny. Yeah. Um, but the framework's still the same, but they've just dressed it up in different clothing. Yeah. The know. framework is still the same. Um, it's... Yeah. And, and it ranges from really um, scammy, like there's no benefit to this stuff, it's just nonsense, to really honest and sort of like uh, trying to help people. And then there's a whole massive spectrum in between. Yeah. yeah. Where, where like you don't know what's yeah, going totally. on. Yeah, totally. You don't know like totally. what, the, what, what your benefit you're going to yeah, get. You yeah, just yeah. have to try and talk to people, see what's up. Yeah. And it's like the, the problem with spiritual stuff is it's immeasurable. Mm. The benefit is immeasurable. Um, it's completely subjective. And, you know, like, more and more, like, my respect in the community goes out to people who start businesses, who start restaurants, who start services and stuff like that, who actually struggle here in the traditional entrepreneurial way um, to build something that benefits the community. And... I see a lot of examples and that's what I love about this place. People have started their dream and people have started their, their like, um, thing that they want to provide to the community. And that's, that's awesome. You know, like uh, <laughs> lots yeah, of these people, yeah. digital nomads can come and go, um, with their woo woo sort of like workshops and stuff like that, which may or may not have benefit for you. I'm not saying categorically don't go. I go to some of these. I enjoy it. I see benefit. It's interesting to hear different people with different ideas, different techniques. And um, yeah, if you do breath work, you're going to feel it because the, yeah, in a way that you've never felt your breath before, for yeah. example. If you yeah. do yoga, you're going to not only feel like a, a physiological effect, but you're going to also feel like a, a emotional effect to it. And this is a place where you can explore all sorts of stuff like that that wasn't on the itinerary for a lot of people in the places that they're from yeah. because everybody was so concerned with going to the job to uh, 
to um, make enough money to survive and then going to the pub with their friends because that's a very traditional and uh, effective way to connect with other people. Here we're past that. We're looking for something more, something deeper. So there's going to be a lot of hit or miss. There's going to be a lot of strange characters with strange attitudes and strange sort of... Um, pea gazing. What? Pea, pea gazing. Pea gazing. You okay. Pea -gazing. <laughs> you brought it up. You oh, tell us about okay, it. So pea gazing is basically like eye gazing. So it's looking at someone in, you know, in the eyes, but it's whilst you go into the toilet. And this guy, this, it's actually... You're standing uh, in the ocean, standing urinating. In the ocean. Yeah, urinate, Let's yeah, be yeah. more specific. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're standing in the ocean and you're looking at someone uh, in their eyes and you're both going to the toilet at the same time. And it's supposed to um, help you get rid of a lot of bodily shame around, or shame around, you know, bodily function. So it, my understanding is it started off as a joke. But then the <laughs> cool thing about copping on is that nothing is so crazy that people don't, wouldn't try it. So this guy created a Facebook event for this pea gazing fake workshop and people signed up and they actually did it. And, and my friend did it and she said that it actually did help her. She felt like it, it helped her kind of um, get rid of some of the shame around, you know, around yeah, her body. Because so, like um, at one point in our lives, we were allowed to just pee free. Yeah. And, -free. and then at, at some point in our, in our molding of a person in this civilization, we were told to actually not uh, yeah. do that. So obviously there would be some sort of shame that was inserted yeah, during yeah. our childhood about that. Yeah. So it, it sounds like yeah. a technique that <laughs> might actually do something. And, yeah. and it's very regressive to childhood memories and stuff like that, but often, as psychology tells us, um, a lot of what shapes us as human beings and our wants and desires and participation in society is our childhood experiences. So I'm going to say, like, well, I haven't tried it. It could, it could work, and it's a really good example of something that you would only find here because <laughs> it just, like, would sound too yeah. outrageous yeah. somewhere yeah. else. Yeah. But here it's like, who knows, man? Yeah. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Let's just try it. Yeah. So you can find all sorts of stuff on the underground here. Um, the best place is, yeah, you just uh, go to the uh, street tunnel and the fruit shops usually have like a, a place where you can put um, posters, posters and, stuff. and stuff like that. You'll yeah. find out about all sorts yeah. of stuff from like uh, um, traditional Thai um, abdominal massage to um, butt workshops yeah, uh, to um, pee gazing, <laughs> pee -gazing. and, uh, and Campbell's ceremonies where they they um, put pro frog poison on your skin to, I guess, um, other stuff like, yeah, you know, yeah. ethnogenic substances yeah. Yeah. and stuff like that. Um, really interesting, folks. Really interesting, and and it's uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity to be in a place where um, people can. Um, explore this weird ass shit without um feeling yeah. judgment from from people and there's space there's time and there's a bunch of characters i mean it's it's like nothing else in the world yeah. that's 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 what these communities yeah. like okay yeah. maybe there's different variants of it in tulum and yeah. bali in different places in goa whatever um but it's wild folks that's and what i love about it like even if you don't want to go to the workshops you don't you know you question the uh the certification of the person putting on the workshop just that there's a that there's a place here where people can kind of do these kinds of things and you know there's a place where people can kind of be kind of as weird as they want and I when love you sit that. down for your morning coffee the people at the next table might be talking about that oh, and man. the conversations you hear yeah <laughs> so um yeah i mean just to sum it up, I think this is a, a unique scene for people who are looking for something different, sick of that uh, consensus reality nine to five. And I'm grateful um, to be a part of this, despite the fact that it has very little to do with the traditional Thai culture that we uh, have all around us mm. and in this country, which is also there if you want to explore it. But largely, I'm here for the weird gringos. I am a weird gringo, and I'm proud to be in a place where weird gringos can be free-range human beings where they experience with this stuff, even that, if that means like uh, yeah. getting it wrong yeah. a lot of the time. And where they can pee free if they yeah. so choose. Pee free. <laughs> All right, folks, we'll catch you later. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe if you like the channel, and check out Sean's other stuff, link in the description. We'll catch you later.